All right, we are now live from the gazebo with our next guest, Shelly If You Nasty. She is a curator of dance instructor. She hosts open mics. She is a creative design on the low. Just on the low. Introduce yourself to the cameras, to everybody. Hey, listening. hey, hey, hey. Um, I am Shelly. Uh, in real life, you know, when you meet me, you can just call me Shelly. Uh, Shelly, if you nasty, on the inters of webs. Um, I'm a content curator. Um, basically, uh, I see things and then, you know, help you spit them out, help you see things and then, you know, uh, make them into real life. Uh, the thing I actually do professionally <laughs> would be dance. Um, the thing I get paid to do, um, I teach at Yasmin Dance School um, on Progress Avenue. Um, teaching ballet, uh, kids ballet, adult ballet, uh, high heels dance classes. Ooh, what else am I doing? Did I miss it? No, oh, okay. I also uh, do my creative uh, contenting, creative curating at uh, La Couture. Um, partnered with Elise, State, Elise Irvis, excuse me. Um, yeah. Doing, uh, doing my open everything. mics there. Yeah, but say, I'm like trying to think of what all we do at Lago Tour, but that's an even more exciting thing. It's a vendor space, uh, third in the Bergs. We have um, a bunch of vendors come out, pop up shop situations. Um, aside from that, we are like currently trying to move into a coffee shop kind of situation after hours. Cafe Negro, be on the lookout for that. Mm -hmm. um, do we, I feel like I'm like already throwing the interview out on in the bus. Like we have so many things to talk about. Just, well, that is just a little I'll be doing introduction. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'll be just doing a little stuff. bit of an introduction because it's so multifaceted what you do. It yeah. seems like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I've never been in a position to actually like talk about all of it at once. So well, this should are. be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. I'm gonna, like practice my segues. If you see me like dancing while we're doing this, don't worry about it. It's all for the good of the conversation. Oh, you have to get ready for tonight too. I know you got to dance. I do. I do tonight, have a dance so, yeah. class tonight which i'm really excited about come pop out to heels you wouldn't even let's just say that this airs and i have a heels class coming on the 29th 20 29th i think so it's like the last friday of the month so go. be there or be square there you go yeah so what's your favorite part about teaching dance and being a dance instructor or curator of dance Ooh. um dance is really all i've really done um i was in dance lessons by the time i was two and then all the way through college is what i went to college for mm -hmm. um i studied dance at our university um something about a feeling uh, it's just like it, it just works there's no words involved so we don't have to talk um i don't have to explain myself it's just what i do goes not even what i say and i feel like what i do is like even more powerful it's just, it's just getting done there is no talking about it there's no room to talk and dance we just dance you're following the actions yeah you know what i mean um where your heart mm -hmm. kind of leads you to go and what i like about it is that because it could be a saturated market. Everyone can dance. We all have two arms and two legs. And even those who don't have two arms and two legs, we've seen it. They dance. You know, yeah, we, we can all move. We all mm -hmm. find our way to get around. Mm -hmm. So, like, to be able to do it um, in a way that's artistic, um, it's inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I like it so much. Um, being able to teach it is super special, um, as I really hold the people who taught it to me in very high regard. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you've gone to school for it, so you've learned and you've studied and you've learned the art behind it, not just the physical movements or just the things that go into just the yeah. performances, but the history probably behind it too, all of the things that encompass performing performance arts too. yeah and i mean the more you know about anything you can like appreciate it more um because you can understand like how one got to one point um that's in anything uh but with dance in particular you know we were dancing i always tell people we were dancing to the gods before we were talking to them before mm -hmm. we had words you know what i mean um and dancing for everything dancing for harvest dancing for celebration dancing for death and life and mm -hmm. birth and all the same um you know and it moved i learned like history through dance like mm -hmm. like dance history makes sense to me i was always really bad at history in um uh school all throughout school i went to side tech but i also went to casa a uh, capital okay. area school for the arts and i went there half day gotcha. uh before they went charter so like i would go over there half day and i would learn history and i could remember it and it could make sense um you know uh dance was once a thing that was done alone solo and then you know we got together and we started dancing and you know twos and now we're dancing in circles um we get back to the social aspect of it so now we're mm -hmm. partnered up again um swinging around and what that is 
um yeah like that that's just where i learned hip-hop all the way through you know like charleston lindy we're in 50s and 60s and then we jump up to swing and disco mm -hmm. and all that so you know now we're in the 70s 80s and it, and it just jumps um we're house dancing now and that's dope we're in the 90s and mm -hmm. 2000s and it, it just moves that way uh right now it's so dope because uh, dance moves with um other history like music history like mm -hmm. we're in the year of the producer right now uh mm -hmm. the as far as music goes um that's just one thing, but we're also in the year of the producer just in society because we're in a, a capitalist time. That's the year of the producer mm -hmm. um, in its own right, where it's just make shit, put it out, make money for it, keep it going. Mm -hmm. um, dance gets lost in that because in, um, in this year of producer, uh, it's all very, a lot of the same thing. Uh, there's not... Um, there's not much to inspire. There's not much different. Um, and dance is really inspired by um, a certain beat, a certain instrument, mm -hmm. real instrument. Um, not that um, I love like dope beats and hard hits and that's a real thing with dance. Also, that has its own market, but just like um, these people who dance for different reasons. You know, I, I dance for social justice. I like to think most of the time. A lot of the things I choreograph are about that. There's not a lot of music mm -hmm. about that right now. There's not a lot of um, um, there's not as much. Uh, an emphasis on the television that's about that now i'm sure there's plenty of it somewhere if you go look for it but mm -hmm. um you have to seek it out you know yeah you do um like mm -hmm. as far as my music i do see seek it out like i don't a lot of the people that i listen to are not on the radio i know mm -hmm. i'm not even listening to the radio they're not getting radio plays it's, mm -hmm. it's straight off um you know the apple music going to the album and i know who i like so that's who i find um a tailor refinement to that and that's the stuff i dance to <laughs> mm -hmm. and so really the dance really encompasses a lot of different aspects of your life too the performing arts and you host open mics as well so tell me mm -hmm. a little bit about that's a good segue into yeah. performing arts and that different lifestyle it has in your life too and you probably meet a lot of people through that as well yeah a lot of different people, um, like -minded yeah the individuals. network is like so much more important to me like knowing people uh who like relate who do the same things that i do you know i always felt like learning um wasn't always the same for me as it was for like other people um i was in different programs in school where it was like um i was at least like I had a tailored learning situation just because it was hard um i just seen things differently i had to move to certain like figure certain stuff out and you meet these other people who are also artistic mm -hmm. um and they don't fit in this one box uh and like you get to see how they figure it out because i mean i'm a dancer and they you know do music we definitely didn't figure it out the same way but we did get there differently than everybody else which is enough to um you know make us then commenters mm -hmm. uh and that's what i feel like i'm gonna open mics i feel like it's such a mosh podge of people but we can all appreciate the fact that we got there differently mm -hmm. as opposed to a, a group of people who can appreciate that they all got there the same way mm -hmm. um you know it's just opposite it's a little bit different i like to i'll say more colorful more colorful yeah mm -hmm. I, I can see people have different paths but they're all coming to the same place i've said that before on here but yeah, yeah. we're That's taking it, different journeys yeah, the same, similar goals yeah um, I describe myself like that. I have it on my Instagram bio, another thing, um, but just a vessel, you know, I say a vessel from here to there and nowhere, um, being able to like plug in people, um, pick them up and just plug them somewhere else, uh, as a host of like multiple events. Cause I mean, aside from open mics, uh, at La Couture, like I've done cabarets at 704 lounge. Um, I've done shows at Little M, shows at H Mac, and these are all, you know, different places with different crowds. Um, mm -hmm. you know, some older as I've gotten older, um, because I mean, my first open mic would have been at Little Amps in 2017. I think I was only like okay. 19, maybe 19 or 20. Oh, okay. I was about to be 20. Um, so, I mean, I couldn't even get into bars at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, I was performing in bars, other things. We can talk about that when we get to dance. <laughs> but I was doing that. Um, but um, being a host, you get to, like, curate the event tailored to who's going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to know who you're dealing with every time. And you have to know, like, can I mix these two people? Like, mm -hmm. um, when I started, because I... Um, my open mics, yes, they're open, um, but I do invite certain people, and I've almost, like, even collected, like, a cast. Like, okay. it seems like, you know, like, the bros over at Naomi17, um, Genius, uh, Zay Wap, Jonesy, um, the So Cool Bros, Lodi, um, <laughs> Chudo, yes. yeah, just shout them all out, Lodi, Chudo, but, like, these groups of people, the, um, what, cool, Av Bros, all of them, they've all come, and they've performed, at, um, performed with me. Some of them might not have even necessarily known each other well enough until seeing mm. them perform, but now my shows have, like, like I said, with this cast situation, people come in, we know each other's songs, we're coming in, we're cooling, the audience isn't there anymore, it's virtual, so That's now amazing. we're, like, right, we're really hanging, you know, like, we're listening to each other. As artists, there's a different appreciation, mm -hmm. um, like, for that, like, thing. 
thing. Um, you know, when I was hosting, it was like open bar situation. I'm here, I'm serving. Um, you know, and now it's like there's nobody there. Like everybody's just there, vibing, paying attention. It, it's like class to me. It feels yeah. like, but like in a good way, like this class presentation. Like everybody mm-hmm. pulling up. Um, you know, and it's what a you comfortability see, too. Yeah. It is. It yeah. is like what you see on camera is like um, what you see on camera is like a. Uh, just the show mm-hmm. but on the side of that there's probably like 20 bros just lined up in the door just watching like everybody's here you know yeah. what i mean we're here and attentive a lot going um, on yeah, yeah. but i said mm-hmm. i said there's two separate rooms and um you know in that first room you know everybody's meeting each other networking doing that plug situation and then the mm-hmm. second room is a whole vibe yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> people yeah. uh getting to put their stuff out um to the folks our next open mic by the way um is october 16th uh, but yeah say and then uh, the one in november i'm still putting a date on it but it's a big deal because it's my one year show hey, um yes yeah, so i've been doing this thank yeah. you i've been doing this for a year so like just be on the lookout for those like, it's all virtual but that means everybody can watch so no matter from yeah. where you are uh at la Couture awesome. 717 on instagram mm-hmm. you will check it out check it out yeah be ready yes it's a great show it's a super great show i love the people who i've met here like whoa and like they're my friends like mm-hmm. so i've seen them do it some people i haven't seen do it like it's just it's, it's interesting and how they all just like rallied up like yes let's go and they're there every time um they do not disappoint it's awesome that is great i mean it's probably that building that connection of people and that network of people is probably such a beautiful thing too because you're probably you you build connections and you build friendships in other different ways too it's really long lasting connections too yeah. yeah i mean these are people who i expect to bring with me you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh forgot i don't know where where they plan to go but i everywhere i go i want to take these people mm-hmm. um because i feel like they deserve it i go out of my way now at least to be around people who i do think deserve it because I, that's the only mentality i have is just like but I, I don't want to do anything just for myself um, as it pertains to this, because I've seen how much like just unfun it is. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't even know what I want, but I see what other people want, and I see I could get that. And I'm like, well, let's get it then. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Why not? Um, you know, I, I want for other people, um, in a way like so strong, like um, to believe in them. Like, yo, like you can do this, cause why not? Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck else can happen? Like, literally, what <laughs> the fuck yes. else can happen? Oh. Um, I do believe that thoroughly. Like, no bullshit. Mm-hmm. I have like no shock value. People are like, yo, like I want to jump off a bridge. All right, cool. We got to find a really, really tall bridge and let's just go. You know what I mean? Let's figure it out. Yeah. Like, I'm definitely not about to talk you down off no ledges, no. Um, off none. Uh, and I would never talk you off if I didn't think that you would be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely like that. The community aspect of it is I definitely it. some of my favorite. <clears throat> and so tell me a little bit about your opinion on the Harrisburg creative scene, art scene, and sort of the future of it, where you see it now, and sort of like just the, your opinion on how we have progressed as a city in an area um that's interesting as far as i'll work that question backwards uh the progression of it uh only because um i feel like i'm just really like seeing it like to have only been here a year i feel like i like nosedived right into it i was like you're like you know like just call my friends and like that's yeah. what happened um so i'm not necessarily sure like about to, especially for three years i was in dc also yeah, so, so about like the contrast in that too i guess yeah um, in that same i mean uh where i was at in dc at around this time so i was just working 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 but there was like uh like every thursday was super dope i would go to a uh, spoken word spit that dc that was out euclid northeast okay. um right. right right across from howard like super dope um that was a poetry slam i could go to i was actually doing more poetry in dc than anything um i uh, would do poetry slams like with the university um do different contests uh there was a rest there is multiple restaurants um down in dc bus boys and poets where they have like a stage set up in like there's certain nights That's where right. like yeah they i think they have like a 25 30 people cap and like you know there's mm-hmm. waiters in there and you sit and you watch you know performances and stuff so That's being so cool. able to see that yeah, and that's stuff that I definitely wanted here because that was like that was stress relief. Like mm-hmm. being in college, college was definitely stressful, and like getting off from rehearsal like ten o'clock at night and like spit that don't even start till late. So like spit that's gonna go till the morning. Like mm-hmm. it's on the top of a church, um, and any but come one, come all. Like come out from the street, like mm-hmm. um, you can go into spit that. It might be three people in, or you'll know, be going to spit that, and it's packed and can't nobody sit down. It's just a small attic, mm-hmm. um, but you know, and it's a vibe. They got rules. They got rules. Mm-hmm. I got rules in my open mic. Like I just I love that. <laughs> Um, I love that. And I just, I saw that it wasn't happening here. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I said, I I would love to talk about the contrast of what was before, but I don't even remember. I was only, well, I literally went to school, went to college. That was boom. But coming back, uh, 
infusing into it uh i like to say i like to think that you know what i'm doing is making some kind of a difference so i like that uh just pushing that forward and um i like i would hope to see like more more of that from anyone mm -hmm. um and anywhere i could help like and stuff like that uh infiltrate myself into what's already here um and then just build on from that for everyone yeah and i think you're tapped into a lot of different creative things here too it seems like i mean yeah from, from i'm learning local <laughs> small businesses to like you said to open mics and yes. different things of that nature elementary coffee yeah. i love them yeah talk so about much. that too yes. the, the collaboration between la cultura um and la elementary, cultura. Coffee. elementary coffee um yes. so i wanted to work at elementary as soon as i moved back here um had a love for coffee was working and coffee in dc um and so i get back they're not hiring but i started working for eight oaks um uh craft is craft distiller excuse me um right across so i do sell alcohol um for a living but i was at elementary coffee every day um but say right before covid like they came mm -hmm. like a big part of my schedule um i was there every monday about to sit and talk with my friends business um you know meetings and stuff like that um, so I did become their friends. Um, once COVID happened, they actually um, were doing a live uh, stream every Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they would have different people on, um, different people hosted. Uh, I was on there hosting every two weeks, playing ukulele, doing fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, so it's like hidden talents. Hey, I play ukulele. ukulele. Yes. Right, yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, um, becoming friends with them, um, we came up with the idea between um, us at La Cultura to have a blend for the culture. Um, um, mm -hmm. so basically we wanted something that, um, not even we elementary really reached out, um, especially in light of like the black lives matter movement and just like, uh, really took initiative on like, well, what can we do for our neighbors already? You know, the people that are already here, mm -hmm. um, and reaching out to us, it was no hesitation whatsoever. I love coffee so much. I've been trying to get into the elementary coffee crew is so cool. They have not been mm -hmm. hiring for a year. Like they're so cool. They just love each other and we love them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been trying to get in there. So I was like immediately, yes, let's make a blend. Let's do that. Um, you know, between my coffee knowledge that I had already. And then, um, Andrea over down at elementary, um, being able to like infiltrate with her team has been amazing. So this blend was something that was super fun to come up with. We've been working on it like since the early um, months of the summer. So being able to put it out here now um, and hopefully do it again already. We've been doing great on sales. So yeah, keep buying a dollar from out. each bag. Um, you can buy them at Elementary Coffee um, either down at the Broad Street Market. You can also come mm -hmm. see me at Eight Oaks right across from them. Um, or you can go down to their store down on 3rd and North Street um, and buy the coffee. A dollar from each bag then mm -hmm. goes to uh, La Cultura. Um, so yeah, back into what we're going to push out to you guys. Yeah, it literally is supporting local business. You're supporting local art. It's it's all tied in together too. And that's the thing yeah, I love too. It's good coffee. It's yeah. such good coffee. <laughs> yeah, so if you love coffee, go see Shelly. Yes. Get her up, seriously. Yes, we got you with that. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about like your, your advocacy and the things that you put in, I know for women's rights and for human rights and sort of like just how you, your work collaborates sort of like with your activism and the things that you are passionate about on a personal level too. Dope, actually, thank you. That's a great question. I never got that one because I don't get to talk about it much, but mm -hmm. I do have a plan. <laughs> um, there you go. What uh, you Let's my it. work uh, with women in particular, you know, I just feel like really, really closely connected to that as a woman, mm -hmm. uh, of course. Um, but just like, I've been teaching, I feel like I've learned so much about womanhood in just these, in just this last year, really, um, when I was in D.C. and kind of like learning to take care of myself. Um, and it almost felt like things I should have known already, you know, like I've been this person, I've lived in this for so long, like things I should have known already. Um, so already, like, because um, it felt heavy, um, you know, when you get into this world, you're thrown out there, you're like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who I am um I don't know who I am that becomes a stressful thing as you've always been this person so it's like did I never know you know you go through that mm -hmm. these identity crises um but looking back on it I feel blessed to have gone through that so early because I really it felt like it it let me know like that I had like more people to help like on that particular front so I do my work mm -hmm. with women uh, mostly because um I do find women um responsible myself included for like birthing a better nation of people and like uh you know really raising people i don't know anybody who doesn't have like a female confidant male mm -hmm. female otherwise you know um have a, a woman that they can rely on i mean like i said women hold life um i feel like a lot of the bouts between women a lot some of the things that block women from understanding themselves from taking the time to teach their children about themselves mm -hmm. and other things a lot of the time um i've noticed women in combat with other women in combat with you know like just like not seeing the bigger picture none of us can really see the bigger picture a lot of the time too but i feel like as women we could spearhead that 
Um, I feel like we should. We we give life. We're life bearers. Like we can do this. Uh, who else? No one else can do it. Um, so like I teach my hair classes with this idea that maybe we can bring women together. You know, on a different front. Um, like we're all here. We're all confident. See the value in other women. Maybe place value on yourself. I realize. Um how much of mirrors we are for like each other mm. um just you and i um women to women even more because you know we got that that womb thing going mm-hmm. on like read about women like periods even sync up women are so cool mm, that connection you know yeah. what i mean like that's a thing I you was, know like, i've grown up in a house of women i was raised mostly by women yeah I see that. yes like this earth circle this empathetic place you know what i mean um and like I said, I feel like uh, we're just like, we, we have so many other things to worry about. So many other things that people make us feel like we should worry about, mm. like what we look like. Mm. <laughs> like what we look like to other people, like, like just things that don't mm. matter, how much we make, who we're standing next to. Mm. Um, but who cooler than us already? Like we got this womb thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like, I, like, that's what I think about. Like when I'm in my class, like if I mm. could just get a couple girls to come in, put on some high heels, they feel like they're doing something and they are. Um, and they are, but all they were doing was being themselves you know what I mean mm-hmm. that, but that you if you can be yourself through all of this I feel like it really uh does make a difference um that's why I started my work with uh grown women but I love that it's like trickled down to now I have teenagers and even younger kids like I think my youngest is like five uh, it's oh it's the cutest thing ever um that's but literally just, a beautiful thing but that girls have that influence mm-hmm, yeah. but girls because I feel like it's all relevant you know what I mean I shouldn't have had to wait to 19 to be sexually liberated just to find out at 23 that that wasn't liberation at all you know what I mean it was like a doot 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 um but like to be um just liberated as a woman that could have happened a long time ago that could have happened my whole life i just spent my whole life understanding what because i've had my womb my whole life you know mm-hmm. what i mean um the this power as a woman is real um it is real for all of us any any one of us that has come witness to it uh um this idea of matriarchy and um coming around so i want to i want to make like a big point on that um like i said because i that is my i feel like my most important job is the whole birth thing <laughs> my job as a woman um to like have children and stuff like that so just mm-hmm. um being on the forefront of like how do we do that with heels mm-hmm. with high heels that's how we do it we put on high heels <laughs> and we dance around nice. and you know if we can manage not to kick the next girl down you know we can focus on other things like picking each other up and i like that so tell me how you sort of embody a lot of the things that you have cared about, whether it's personal wellness or liberation of oneself and being more self-aware, sort of how it ties together psychedelic awareness, yeah. all of that. So tell me how it ties in. Oh, man. Um, that was like, poof. I, I, you know what? I can remember it vividly enough to talk about it. I remember um, when I moved to D.C., um i don't know the, that whole thing was just interesting i made the decision that i did not want to go back to school one but i also made the decision that like that didn't mean that i had to stay here in harrisburg with my parents so mm-hmm. i was like all right cool i'm gonna go ahead and move to dc um and stay like it's where i knew it's where i was most comfortable my friends were still there my mm-hmm. friends were still in school so i'm gonna go out to dc um i had enough uh to rent with my friends i had two housemates at the time um and yeah i just moved out to northwest dc it seemed like a good idea mm-hmm. and was um you know and i paid my my security deposit that was august and i was like all right cool so i got till december to find a job <laughs> um, so, so that's what i did and i found a job um, well i mean till september excuse me to find a job so i get a job by september and realize that between this one job, that's not going to pay my rent for October. So mm-hmm. I got a second job in September. Yeah. And when I seen what that was doing, I was like, ooh, working is dope. I would love to eat. So I had to get a third job. Um, so like by like middle of uh, October, beginning of November, I was cranking three jobs wow. uh, working in D.C. Um, uh, and I just I had a lot of time um, before those three jobs, though, like I said, I had the month of August and I realized like like um I'm like, what the fuck do i do like i had to give myself mm-hmm. purpose like to a day um it wasn't like when i was in harrisburg and i had work every day um no i'm here and i'm in dc and my rent is paid and i low-key really can't afford to like just hop on the metro and like roll around like i have yeah. no money to do anything like what does one do yeah. um I, I can only google jobs i can't even go yeah, <laughs> so um i cleaned I cleaned every day. I woke up um, in the same in the same place and cleaned the same spots every day. And I read. I started ordering books. The first book I ordered, um, it was called Zen and the Art of Happiness. And it was by Chris Prentice. Um, 
and it was literally a book on how to be happy because mm -hmm. um, that's the first place I found myself unhappy um well I mean I guess that's why I ended up here you know I, I was able to realize that like okay I was unhappy in school but why the hell am I here mm -hmm. I'm still not you know so I read that book on how to be happy and um there was one thing in there that I took from that and it said uh you have to believe that everything is for your benefit. So it's not just enough to really believe that everything happens for a reason. You have to believe that things happen for your benefit. And if you could like thoroughly believe that in your heart of hearts, anything can happen to you and already you are on the optimistic end of it. You're looking for forward to something better. Like, ah, oh, fuck, my car broke down. So that means that an even newer car is coming out and we're like, whoa. <laughs> like, you know, like you have to have that like eager excitement, even when it doesn't feel like it, you know, you have to uh, have faith in something and mm -hmm. something bigger than you. Um, Finding the blessings in the gray. Really. Yeah, yeah, you know, something bigger than you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a lot of lessons in D.C. with that. Um, once, I, once I figured out how to be happy, then I started, you know, breaking apart the people around me, you know, mm -hmm. and what, the where, where am I? Um, and it's easy to start with the people because there's plenty of people around you. Um, but it's easy to start there. Where am I? Um, because I was only around the same people in D.C. Like I said, I had three housemates and working three jobs. Mm -hmm. um, the people I got to know were my coworkers. And I learned what it was, like, the value of my time and money and how that worked. Because that's all I did was work. I mm -hmm. um, with, with three jobs, my schedule turned out to be 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. most days. Um, I might get one day off every other week, um, something mm -hmm. like that. But for the most part, we're doing 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. and this is at least two jobs a day um they might not be the same two jobs but at least two jobs a day um i was working at banana republic i was working at a coffee shop um blue bottle coffee in southwest uh mm -hmm. and um what's the other one? Oh, frame bridge which was awesome uh i did custom art framing that That's the cool. coolest friggin job ever That's so cool. um yes i had I really good jobs um and that worked for a little bit <laughs> Mm -hmm. for a lot of it actually because it was paying my rent man it was paying my rent um you know i met some people through dc but like i learned what networking was and what value was from coworkers. so i learned mm -hmm. it in the way of money so like that's like coming back here like that's the knowledge i was really holding on to um and as i'm learning the value of money and realizing how much it isn't uh as far as like what mm. makes me because i'm breaking down i was wearing two knee braces in dc um the one thing that wasn't that i wasn't doing in dc that i did love to do and that that i've been doing all my life was dance i was not mm -hmm. dancing this last year um because i wasn't in school for it um so i by the time i left dc i was like in two knee braces and stuff like that but like i said i'm getting i'm learning the value of time like, what the mm -hmm. fuck is that i'm tired i i got to this point where i was like i'm waking up and i go to work and i wake up and i go to work and all i do is wake up and go to work and then go to sleep and then wake up and go mm -hmm. like there was like no i wasn't looking forward to anything mm -hmm. at best i would go to the bar after work like i could walk to the bar and that would at least mean that my uber would be cheaper because i walked like a couple blocks <laughs> i walked a couple blocks mm -hmm. and like it all made sense i remember being at the bar and i get there and i'm having a grand old slap diddly time and i'm by myself as i tend to be um you know because mm -hmm. who's working my hours and like i all but passed out like in this bar and i'm just like bro I am bored. I am pooped. And for mm. what? Like, what do I have to show for it? My rent's paid in mm. this house that I live in with three other people. This is not me. Mm -hmm. um, this is not where I'm at. So I had made the um, decision, one, to quit my job very peacefully um, and find my way back home. With, but, like, not without taking, like, the most from these places. Like, mm -hmm. um, the stuff I learned from the coffee shop is exactly what threw me into this partnership with La Couture yeah. and um, Elementary. Straight like that. That's off the strength of, like, being able to talk about coffee, you know what I mean? And being mm -hmm. able to have have like a shared passion that then turned into a project um being a performer threw me straight into the realms you know of doing these open mics um I, like i said i was working at custom framing um and doing custom framing like that's all about art people come in with their personal items and when i say personal i mean anything mm -hmm. from like a signed napkin from danny devito to like their kids refrigerator art and they're yeah. paying money i've seen people you know, i've seen bills i've seen 400 dollar bills i've seen 1700 dollar bills like on this framing of wow. stuff that's going to be hanging there Place. and it is precious art i mean anywhere from the two dollar pieces to the thousand dollar pieces that come in they're beautiful wow. and they're all personal to people mm -hmm. um so i mean that like having that appreciation having to look at somebody and smile and not even like really fake it but like really get excited for them like mm -hmm. they're about to present nobody frames something that they're not proud of you know what True. i mean so like i think about that when people come into my open mics like don't know ain't nobody gonna put this on live stream mm -hmm. that they're not proud of it you know and my first oh yeah my open mics man and i like to say that like i really i have had some of the best performers i really can't mm -hmm. think of like any that were just like 
Which is wild, because like, when you do open mic, like, you, I, I'm prepared one. for that. You're expected for one person to not. Yeah, you know, and I'm fully, I'm fully prepared for that mm-hmm. shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I don't turn nobody down. Like, I have three rules at my open mics. You know, first and foremost, um, my artists have to introduce themselves. I think that's really important. You know, they introduce themselves, tell people mm-hmm. where they can find them. Um, secondly, uh, I really need, like, all respect, like, for my artists. That's it. Respect for everybody mm-hmm. up here. Um, that's how we do. And then thirdly, of course, that everybody makes a friend. I think it's really important that, you know, like, we're all here for a reason. Um, we were all here. Something brought us to this place, whether it's to see a friend, um, you know, whether it's we're performing ourselves, whether you just heard about it on the street. But something brought us here. There is a common interest. Mm-hmm. So please, I, I like that people meet somebody like um, at my show. It's very important. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna say that um, the things that I've learned from these other jobs, um, I don't know. Once I learned the value of time, I was like, all right, so this is what I need to be spending my time doing. Like, mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. There is no amount of money worth two knee braces, bro. There's just not. Like, I was Especially in pain. This age, Mind yeah. you, I'm not. I'm teaching dance tonight and every Friday night and like four times a week. Like, and I don't wear my knee braces. You know, what I mean? like I know the value of love and what that is, and to like love what you do, like to the point where like mm-hmm. shit don't hurt. I don't need sleep. I don't. I, I binge sleep, yo. Like, I work mm-hmm. on the weekends right now. I work this morning. I'll be working till this evening, and I'm still gonna find time for a drink because i know that value too <laughs> i know that value too mm. um you know that the the value and like time for yourself um and you know working on those uh those things and love and addiction and what that is that's mm-hmm. definitely a lot of what i study um right now currently i'm trying to figure out how to portray that per dance when i get around to the artistic uh, i will let you guys mm. know all about love and addiction that's what i've been thinking about wow. lately but on the love tip though you know it started on a self front mm-hmm. and what better place i'm learning now that i've been here for a year what better place to learn about self than home Absolutely. um to be back yeah. in harrisburg it was time you know what i mean like i figured out what i wanted to do and then you know being here in harrisburg i'm able to like really infuse it like in myself learn mm-hmm. where like my art stands in my root because i'm here i'm rooting at home i'm I'm right around the corner from my house. <laughs> they, um, That's awesome. Yeah, so I love that. And so you're teaching yourself, like like you said, that self-love and things that are so important to caring for one oneself. And you're learning that in a different way now than uh, probably you did back in D.C. when you were so stressed out and yeah. running with fumes all the time. And yeah. So you have a little bit more re- relaxation for yourself. And you're doing things that probably make you a little bit more fulfilled i would say oh yeah I'm, t- I tell you, I'm not tired yeah, <laughs> that's how exactly. i feel and like i'm like i said my my knees are good like but um you know there was a things that there were there was an order to it you know what i mean because leaving here was also important because i wouldn't have been able to appreciate here the same way if mm-hmm. i had never mm-hmm. left like there is no way um I came back here knowing that there was no way in hell I could do D.C. again. But I wouldn't have known that if I didn't do D.C. Yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I would not have known that if I didn't do D.C. at all. And to meet, like I said, like to meet the people, like to come coming back from D.C. Um, and swinging a city like Harrisburg. I mean, you just you just see it different. Um, you know, you see the things that happen other places and how we can bring them here. You know, if your head's on right, you know, some mm-hmm. other people might be like, oh, well, uh, well fuck it. I can always go to D.C. and party. Or you could just throw your own party, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Or you could bring the thing that you want if you're willing to spearhead on that, um, you know, and doing it for love will always, uh, you'll somehow benefit, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I personally, it's definitely network over net worth, you know. If mm-hmm. I got 10 people to take care of me, Seriously. I could do without $100, um, you know what I mean? Just pick, I pick it, you know, and that, that's yes. that's all in um, how you take care of yourself, though. That's the thing, you know, your vibe really does attract um, your tribe. So, like, being able to take care of yourself, you attract people who take care of themselves. And you attract people, like, you know, who are, like, on the same wavelength as you. That's always going to be true. I said something mm-hmm. about mirrors earlier. I can't mm-hmm. remember what it was about, but that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, if, if I, I'm upright, so I'm not particularly offended by people who show up to me you know I, I see what they are um for good or bad or otherwise and mm-hmm. where I stand on that and I'm able to make like I'm, I'm able to just stand my my arm's length and that still be safe and um you know that's uh that's all a part of that working when mm-hmm. you have to network with people when you got to host different events and know who's gonna get along with who and swing mm-hmm. a room like that you have to understand everybody who's in the room um, and you you're can't managing do that. personalities, and you're pretty much you're an HR manager, almost. right? Right, yeah, right. right. Really well, and, and it becomes that you yeah, literally honestly. it becomes that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I, my shows are tailored to different. Like my shows at seven oh four were mainly singers, you know. But mm. at my open mics, I got I mean a plethora. I've uh, at my peak, I had you know rappers and spoken word and comedians. We had like a whole like twenty minute comedic mm. like break in that. Like it was crazy. Like That's awesome. my show, it was set for two hours, and then we had to stretch it to three hours. Like it, it was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, we had people doing all kinds of stuff but like you know once i saw 
who was good for what, you know, I had a Valentine's Day event that was just my spoken word artist. That was like a chance to spotlight them. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we had our Cafe Negro event where I picked some of my favorite singers. I'm Cherry Springs was there. Um, you know, um, my uh, things at 704, most of my singers, I try to call them out to that kind of stuff. Um, but like that also like puts puts people in rooms like where that's a thing. Like, you know, like some people might not appreciate what's all in the room if it's all in the room yeah. at one time, you know, so giving them all their like opportunities to shine at what they do mm -hmm. putting them in rooms where you know their their name does mean something sure. um where it can mean a lot more it's not so saturated uh giving them all those opportunities that's I super like important that. yeah it's, it's yeah. really really you, a lot of thought put into it too honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's like i mean it, it's out here <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's literally out here you know what i mean mm -hmm. and i feel like that's important for everybody to um mm -hmm. if i have access to it what the hell am i gonna do with it mm -hmm. i'm gonna meet just meet somebody else that's what i that's my look that's what i feel like. I'm gonna meet somebody else forget it you know i, yeah. I find my so, carry the torch yeah. i find myself in dumb situations like that yeah. you know the same way i hype my friends up like girl you could do this i do that to me sometimes mm -hmm. um probably not uh when it matters most i can stand to kick myself in the ass a little bit more when it comes to this work mm -hmm. but like on those reckless situations th those situations that like there's it, it really is now or never i could take a now or never chance i could do that um mm -hmm. and a lot of those come to me sometimes and i'm able to just be like well mm -hmm. let's just see it I'm open to whatever. Take it as is. Yeah, yeah so I'm like, if there's always like said like, there's a group of people and they're like, "Wow, well, I want this and I want that." I'm always down for the tiebreaker. Well, this is what we should do. Like, yeah. that, I'm, I will do that. That's Settle fine. right in the middle. Yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always down to hop, hop in with that. Mm -hmm. And for that, I've had some interesting experiences. <laughs> mm. Very interesting, I bet. Yeah. Heck yeah. Managing those different types of personalities and people. Mm -hmm. And knowing how that they're gonna work, having faith that they're gonna work. Like I said, like you gotta be cool. Though. You cannot be biased. Like you gotta know who you're looking at. And for that, you have to know who you are for that. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, like, oh, certain things might annoy me, but just knowing that, I could be like, oh, well, that's a me thing. Mm -hmm. and take yeah. accountability, responsibility situations, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So transitioning a little bit, I know that you have sort of a passion. I know you want to travel. I know you want to get out and, you know, experience. So tell me a little bit about some of the places and things that you want to experience and do as far as traveling. And like you said, bringing that back as well. I know I, I had an interview with the House of Vegans and they said that they started out with travel vlogging and they saw things in other places that they wanted to bring back to Harrisburg. So tell me a little bit about some of the things that you want to see in other places that you would like to see here as well. Ah, uh, so and I haven't done much travel yet for what mm -hmm. I want to do. Like I said, I lived in DC and that was cool. But then other than that, I really haven't lived in other places. Um, and I don't feel like I've experienced many places like as the human that I am right now. Um, I feel like any place I've been, you know, like as a child or stuff was experienced through the lens of the people around me, mm -hmm. um, which I mean, that's neither here nor there. They weren't my experiences, you know, they weren't the places that I would have appreciated. I did. I, for a while, I mean, who, how, how would I even know what I did appreciate? Yeah. Um, as an adult now, I appreciate things like food and, um, I like to look at stuff. Um, cause I can sit down. Like some people like, like to go on trips and they're like itinerary, mm -hmm. like, let's go do this and this and this and that. I'm just trying to do some shit that I can't do at home. <laughs> so like, you know, saying I want to see shit that I can't see at home i would just sit down and look at it i'm good um uh yeah you know just those kind of experiences i like entertainment mm -hmm. um i was just talking to somebody about like how paying for entertainment like i feel like goes so underrated like everybody mm -hmm. like you know everybody wants something they could take home that's not what life is anyway you know mm -hmm. ain't none of this shit yours like pay for a vibe invest in a vibe um mm -hmm. that's why i like that's why i curate vibes like i just see like the what it is like oh somebody thought of that and where like Nope. Most people don't even think of that guy, mm -hmm. but God forbid that guy misstep. Somebody is going to remember like the three second pause between the songs. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like if the DJ is like fucked up and like I not paying you. attention, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. But when he's on it, nobody gives a shit. Mm -hmm. Nobody gives a shit. Um, so like that's that kind of stuff. Um, so I pay attention to that. So somewhere where I can get catch a vibe anywhere, mm -hmm. sit somewhere, eat some new food. Um, I definitely I've been thinking about traveling. I'm ready to get out of here, of course, just to come back. Of course, just come. Back. I had to get grounded real quick. Um, but I want to do like bus. I want to live on a bus. Okay. Um, like, like a like a road trip sort of. Yes. Okay. Like I just want to be on a bus all the time. Um, I was I've been saying it. I feel like it's probably true, but I'd like to like join a circus in Vegas or something. Wow. Um, I was just talking about posture earlier, and I was not upright. <laughs> um, but yeah, now like join a oh, circus yeah, in Vegas on. or something. Um, I do uh I do like aerial yoga around here. I was doing it at oh my yoga it's over at camp hill yeah and it's like in the silks and stuff like i love being upside down um you know uh there's a lot of artistry in that i like burlesque um okay. yeah so this is that club part i was talking about let's get there um yes, so yes. Uh, let me look in the camera the club stuff oh there's good light right here hi Ooh, look at that. 
um but the club stuff um so when i first moved back here not even first moved back here i was still in college at the time um but i was 18 now um so i could get into some bar situations i started doing drag um i was dancing backup wow. for drag queens That's um yes i was dancing backup for so like i wasn't in drag like i was still shells um but i was dancing backup for uh someone who did drag so that's how like i like got into the bar scene and like once i saw like what that was and just like the drags like oh like i mean i've i've, I've always been on stage you know what i mean like i've been doing dance and that was the thing but like you know i'm like in very stark like i'm a very like, i'm a classically trained dancer like that shit's hard mm -hmm. um that shit's hard it's like the boring stuff that you that people don't want to watch um but i'm seeing these people in drag and i'm like well they hired me so like they're doing the same things that i'm doing like i, I can 100 percent respect it like they call me they have a job for me so i don't understand why like this right here is not on the concert stage like i don't understand it like mm. i need to see it like it's ballroom culture it's so like underground you know what i mean mm. um i mean and that and that's for its own reason and where uh people queer people stand in society which is already left but these folks are dancing mm -hmm. so i i want to be where they're at you know what i mean when you're dancing we talked about it, you don't have to explain much there's nothing much to be explained we're dancing and we're vibing like that that, mm -hmm. that part that don't nobody that they, they wouldn't notice they would not notice if it uh you know was all fine and dandy but when the mm -hmm. shit's left when the vibes left you notice yeah, it that's what a dancer mm -hmm. is and and everybody in there dancing is having a good time so it seems like the vibes are all right to me um you know what i mean like and that's uh like we're in this year the producer now where you know everybody just kind of in the club like this spending their money you know like ain't, ain't nobody dancing you know it's not a thing nobody's dancing but just like i don't Real know shit, I, just have, I have this like theory because i mean i met like um the last guy i was dating like i met him dancing in the club and then okay. another guy i was dating that dj like dancing in the club like that's a thing like yeah. this, this is fire and i like i recognize it but like um People aren't doing that no more. People mm -hmm. aren't dancing in the club. Like, you know, you're not so, me. So we're all, like, everybody in the club now is just, like, me mugging each other and, like, looking, Yeah, like, like phone, yo, like, and then they're going to hit you up. They're going to hit you up after and be like, yo, I seen you at the club. Yeah, uh, standing over there at the corner. Bruh, yeah. I'm looking right at you. I'm looking right at you. They're going to look at their phone and they're going to say, I seen you at the club. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, like, it's just weird. Um, but, you know, I... It's the vibe thing, the dancing. Yeah. Just anyway, so I'm dancing in clubs. Um, that's a cool situation. So aside from maybe joining a circus, which I'm into, um, I do want to open burlesque lounges. Like that's like the cool, cool as like, fuck here. I ain't gonna hold you. That like so just cool. uh, it ain't like, like I said, that around here though. It's not, yeah. but like it's not far. Like we're in DC, we're in New York. Um, that was like like before I completely hop ship and just said, all right, fuck it, let's move back to Harrisburg, which mm -hmm. I do not regret that choice. It was definitely a good reason. Good things are happening here. Yeah. Um, but still, before I was ready, I was like, let's audition in New York a couple times. So I did audition for like different spots in New York, and like I said, like these are big money. One fifty a chair, the cheapest chair. Wow. Yeah, and I paid it too. It was amazing. Wow. Oh my. Mm -hmm. like just Don't to see it, it no mm -hmm. like and it's just um and it's the same um dramatics as like these drag shows but these are men these are women and nobody you know everybody's dressed as themselves just yeah. dramatic like we're here um it's the thing it was where i felt like i related like where um my sensuality was there mm -hmm. um because i always felt, i feel like as a dancer and especially as a young dancer because dance is some of the like the first stuff that like people put their kids in True. so like as a dancer and being so young like but knowing how to do that from a young age, you know what I mean? So possessing that sensuality as a young at a young age and really not having anybody to like guide that like um you know they're only teaching it to you as dance they're not bringing um you know that sexual liberation into yeah, it that personal and, like, aspect yeah, yeah. Like, I'm it's like i'm going to school i'm going mm -hmm. to school and i know that i'm good at it but i don't feel like myself in it because i mean mm -hmm. like you know i'm not because i am a woman and i do have hips and like you know people people look at you and they know you can dance and like you confuse us so why they look like you know they owe you owe them something you know and i guess well maybe i do or you know or to even know that you have the choice like that oh, wow. you don't owe them nothing like because that's mm -hmm. all you're taught. You're taught to dance for people. You're taught to dance for your mm -hmm. teacher and your instructors and for the crowd and stuff like that. And I see it's these, like at um, the drop of a hat. Just to, you know what I perform mean? For me. Perform yeah, for me. Yeah. People don't even realize the value in that, you know. But like this artistry that is burlesque, you know, you're not just performing for me. Your your job is to create an experience. Mm -hmm. You have to turn me on from over there. 
with all of your clothes on. You have to do that. That's something I think all women hold. In general, all women do hold it. All women can do that just sitting right here. But I mean, like, if you want to do it, um, you know, on stage, that's dope. And I think you should get your coin for it. If you're 150 sure. for a cheap chair. Yeah. Um, you know, we getting into the five, six hundred. These people are taking, you know, $100 a week home. And, that's, and they earn yeah. that. They earn that for just being themselves, you know, and mm -hmm. doing what they do. Um, I think it is special. Like, it should, it's not so saturated. I feel like there is so much, um, uniqueness in the fact that like i said we can all dance so like to be able to do that in a way that is enticing to do in a way that other people can't do is something worth being rewarded mm. for you know it's the extraordinary um mm. the ordinary being done extraordinarily it's True. uh it's that um you know and i'm mm. into that that's what works like for it. me what i want to get into i like i like it and so what can we expect in the future from shelly like what is gonna be next year what's 2021 in the future gonna hold oh such a great question i'm thinking about so much um one thing i learned um you know just from being in school and like what a stifling feeling that felt like not being able to have my hand in everything mm -hmm. um being able to have a conversation like this where my hands were in everything and it still flowed was like super a big deal mm -hmm. um so i'm hoping to like keep swirling to keep my hand in everything and like you know like still be afloat with that like understand i guess the bigger picture of it because you know like just like i was talking to you earlier and i don't even think that was on camera but just like i find myself being a leader of people and i take that seriously mm -hmm. so i learn the different jobs you know what i mean i consider myself to be a curator and a director but you know i I can take a picture, sure, if I want to do the photography, but I want to hire a guy who could do it. But I've learned how to do that so that I could talk to him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even through CASA, as early as high school, I was working with musicians. Like, they were, they're making live music. Those kids at CASA put on a two-hour show that they wrote, mm -hmm. directed, like, their whole, all oh, of themselves, yeah. um, and played the music. And this is live music. These kids are making scores. It's crazy. <laughs> so, amazing. like, so I'm wor I've am i worked with live musicians before, so, like, I know how to talk to them in numbers, you know, and counting measures and phrases and, you know, classical musicians and stuff like that. Being able to catch a beat here a beat you know like um being able to understand what part of that that i can catch as a dancer because d dancing is body language mm -hmm. um and it's like when you can hear it and then there's a move to it and a person can see it it almost feels like they're talking to you oh yeah catching um, that rhythm yeah oh, that's yeah. the allure of you know what i mean mm -hmm. just me talking with my hands is enough to keep you there like that mm -hmm. um so uh that kind of thing so as a curator like learning all that stuff and being able to put it together so mm -hmm. i'm hoping that in 2021 i'll be able to like really maneuver myself in those pots okay. now that i'm being encouraged positively because i was in school and i saw my one of my teachers looked me dead in my face and was like you do a whole lot nobody's going to be able to follow that pick one wow straight like that um sort of discouraging too, very discouraging yeah. um yeah. and then like i was like i just i was like i'm not paying for this depression i can't afford it <laughs> i literally had to, all right, I, was, I was to the point where i was reading a book on how to be happy i mean like yeah. i could not afford this depression anymore it was you. too much like i haven't even made a year's worth of tuition back like and when i think about how much happier i am it's just like oh hell it just wasn't it wasn't worth that particular um mm -hmm. amount of like so now that i'm like in a good space and i am encouraged to like dabble in all those things i'm interested to yeah. see and how well that'll go with all the things i like to do the music Same, the man. art the dance the spectacle that's one of my favorite yes. words the it's spectacle. all tied together too it is all tied together yeah, yeah. and so it's, someone has to think of it all um and you know i have friends who do it um and there's they're doers and thinkers and doers and thinkers and not everybody likes to think and why should you when there is someone who can do it for you <laughs> I agree. That's the thing. That's the yeah. thing. Don't hide. Do not start thinking yourselves that I will do it. I I would love to get paid to do that. I will creatively think for you as much you as you would like. Yes. That's the thing. You don't have to think at all. Creative director. Yes. yes. Love it. Yeah. So tell the people a message to the followers, to your supporters, to anybody like that tunes final in. Thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So tell the people what they need forward. to know about you. Give them a message. <sighs> yes. On, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give it to these guys here because my oh. light is immaculate. Oh. Um, I guess in light of recent situations, um, in my own year long journey, I'm just gonna say, like, there is not a time too late to prioritize your happiness, okay? Um, when mm -hmm. I stopped going to school, you know, and I had to, t I had to fight with myself a lot because, you know, I'm not, I'm not a person who starts and like stops things i complete things all the way through i'm gonna finish this but this idea of like i, did, I put it into a perspective like you know all right so school say costs eighty thousand dollars that's like a way wild number but let's just say school costs eighty thousand dollars and um a year if i would have 
told anyone that I was paying eighty thousand dollars to you know it's just me I saved up eighty thousand dollars actually no I didn't save it up but I had enough money to get a loan whatever eighty thousand dollars you know and I went on this all expense paid and I traveled the world and I learned everything you know everything I needed to know um and I had a really good time it looked really like I was crazy to call me selfish this you do what that's a, that Rachel, she just spent $80,000, um, you know, treating herself. But I was paying, you know, the equal amount to be depressed, to be upset, to not be taken care of, to not learn much of anything. I learned, I learned a lot of what things weren't and where that's valuable now because I know what things are in contrast. I imagine if there was somebody who understood what shit was enough where they could buffer that. You know, not enough of us want to be a buffer for those situations. Everybody wants to, you know, it's a very much a cap. We all have to struggle. And the thing is, we mm -hmm. don't. You know what I mean? That's what lineage is. That's, and that's like with my work, like with women, you know, I understand what it is to bring life, maintain life and keep life going. You know, like that lineage stuff, being able to um, experience a thing without having to figure out what it's not. Like listening when somebody tells you what it's not mm -hmm. um, and then moving from that. So, you know what I mean? But it's never too late to prioritize your happiness. That point that I had said as far as like... um everything that happens is for your benefit if you can believe in that it is a happy existence you know and you understand that there is something bigger there's something so much um bigger than you um and for that you can prioritize prioritize your happiness it's not not too late for that you're not too oh, i could do it later that's a joke you could die now if you just get it done <laughs> like as crazy as that sounds you know what i mean you have you you live in to die um you know as, as opposed to dying to live like you could really live and get this shit done and there is no phone you be waiting for death you're waiting for it man if i died today you know what i mean Th this and this is my final point this is how i leave it because this is what made me quit my fucking job i thought about if i walked out of my job by nine to five let's call it a nine to five and i got hit by a bus right afterwards like and died how pissed my ghost would have been like dead ass like that's the last thing i did now and it's no matter what like i'm i'm on it now i i, I sell alcohol if i get hit after selling alcohol Alcohol, I guarantee you I met some lit motherfuckers that day. Everybody who came to talk to me was going to get drunk. Other than that, if I got hit by a bus after one of my dance classes, the last thing I did was shake my ass. You feel me? Like before I died. Um, I prioritize my happiness and that's what it is. It is shaking ass and bourbon whiskey. I love it. Jerry's that. final thoughts. I love it. Oh my goodness. Shelly, if you're nasty, you can find her on Instagram, Only if Twitter. You ask me. Tell them everywhere they need to find you too. Shelly, if you're nasty, you can find me on Instagram, on the Twitters, on I do now have Facebook. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't use it that much, but I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it. Uh, just following up my other homies, please follow um at Lakutora seven one seven. Also, um, where I do uh my executive uh, creative directing. That's like gonna be housing my studio area. So if you do, you know want to work we got fun props uh did we talk about these street signs i sell it's a, we don't want to talk about it just just know that i i got props man props on props on props sure, sure. um oh, and ideas see. and brains and you know people who know people there you go shelly knows everybody Shelly's gonna my tap you in, so I'm, i would love to tap you in like i said right now like Tour is my powerhouse so please you know come through us uh come through us and mm -hmm. see who you can't meet uh, our little black book of teens love it i love it shout out la cultura shout out shelly if you're nasty seriously thank you so much for being here shelly i really appreciate this was you. fun this was so cool yeah, it's awesome this has been live from the gazebo with shelly if you're nasty this is your host tyler Vopel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Gazebo, 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 gazebo,